Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Hi, this is Richard. Corey passed me your order number. Let me pull that up. Okay. Okay, installation on some interlock. Okay, yeah, super easy. So uh, hit me with it. What are you working? You've got Dorbin 16AZ and Dorbin 32Z um, interlocking weather stripping. So what are you doing? Well, like I say, it's been city. I'm going to put you on so you can join the guy that's here to help me with this. Um, you know, it's just been sitting there in my garage. Um, since I painted that door. And, um, you know, so I don't really remember what the deal was, and he's never seen this stuff before, and I've never seen it before. Um, and it's just, I, we're trying to figure out exactly how it fits in there and how you yeah. get it to fit perfectly and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it's fundamentally easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Getting it actually installed may prove something that there is no prior work, you know, skill uh, that has been developed to actually do it. Mm -hmm. So when I see what was ordered, you know, there's not enough here to do an entire door, and maybe you're not doing an entire door. So what part, what side of the door are you trying to interlock or weather seal? Well, I was sort of wondering about that too, um, looking at the whole thing now. Um, but I think, so the deal is, um, on, okay, for the door, on on the hinge side, it's got a slot that I assume the zinc strip fits into, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so it's got a slot in the wood. That's all wood. And then on the top, we have that's still on the door. On the on the hinge side, it's here, although it did get bent at the bottom. I don't know. That's not good, but I don't know. We'll we'll just pretend that's not, and I'll deal with that later. Maybe I have to order another piece. I don't know. Um, on the bottom, it's there. It's been banged around a little bit, but it's there. So I'm thinking that that was the thing. I just ordered the door side. You mean the what lock I side? Or the door frame side, is that, is that what we both mean? What, what, of the four sides of the door, what side are we starting with to consider? What, what should we talk about first? It, Top, it, bottom, it looks hinge like side, lock side. It looks like the pieces that are supposed to be on the door are on the door still. So I think that what ah. I was ordering was what went on the door frame side. Okay, I understand. That, that being said, at this juncture, uh, the one on the on the doorknob side of the door is bent at the bottom, so I may need to replace that, but we're gonna we're gonna cross that bridge after we figure out how to install it. <laughs> so at the header, what's done up what is how is the header treated? You know, the top of the door I shouldn't say the header, the top of the door. What does that look like? The top of the door has one of these zinc strips up there. Okay, on the door. And it actually looks like that is one piece that was, I mean, this door was probably made with the thing, I'm guessing, right? Well, the door would have been designed and then machined to receive this weather stripping, sure. Okay, because it looks like that is one piece because it's just bent at that 90 degree angle at the top. And yeah. then it goes goes to the hinge side of the door. Yeah. So, so that's intact. So on your door, you've got the piece attached to the door at the top. You've got the different shaped piece attached to the bottom of the door, and then you've yes. got the the eight foot or the uh, eighty inch length plus or minus on the lock mm -hmm. side of the door. Okay, well that's good. So what you'll do is it, it does strike me that you're short one piece for sure. Um, you would need. Uh, you know, a long piece for the hinge side, and that gets nailed to the jam or to the rabbit of the frame, the same area so that is, the hinges are. Is that, 
Is that a piece that I currently have, though, right? Well, you've got two 80-inch lengths yep. of this of this L-shaped material. So mm -hmm. you're going to need one of those pieces on the hinge side attached to the frame. Mm -hmm. You're going to need the other piece attached on the lock side attached to the face of the stop, not to the this rabbit. Is this is big that, and I'm going to leave that. Okay. Yeah, I, then, I then you're going to need a shorter piece for the header attached to the face of the stop, and that's the one you don't have. It sounds like you don't have. I have a shorter piece here. Yeah, but that's a different part number. That's the the J-shaped piece, not an L-shaped piece, correct? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so that goes, that thir that's the 32Z. That goes to the bottom of the door. That you would not use anywhere but the bottom of the door. Okay, so that's kind of bent up down there anyhow, so that's good. We can yeah. replace that. Okay. Okay, so I still need... What I would... If you're going to change the piece on the door attached uh, on the lock side, I might buy an 80-inch piece so that you could pull off the bent one. Out of that, salvage the piece you need for the header... And then that new 80-inch piece will go where you just pulled out the old one. Okay. So pull this one off. Now, so this you, one is, is is the one that's, like, it's it's not two pieces that are attached to the door. It's actually a one piece at a 90-degree angle at the top. So and it's on the I door, yeah. So you need the sister product or the mated opposite that will be attached to the face of the stop up at the header. And has the installer looked at the manufacturer's cross-section, the drawing that they drew back 70 years ago of what this is supposed to look like when it's installed? If not, no. it, well, uh, m me blabbing on about it is not going to be as good as just looking at the looking at the cross-section of it. It's <laughs> what you okay. see, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> okay, where do we find that? So in my website, uh, do you have access to a browser? I do. I was just pulling your website up. Okay. Okay. So when when you get to absupply.net, let me know. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in that in that search box top center, type in one six, then the letters A Z as an Alpha Zulu, and then hit enter. I'm sorry. What was it again? I just got it. Oh, what okay. Sorry. Sixteen A Z. Capital or does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. 16 capital or 16 that's AG, it. that's it? That's all. Okay. Now, when the first item comes up, when, when that page loads, there should be four pages. So just click on the first item. Okay. Did, the, did you go to the detail page of the first item? Yep. Okay. Now, scroll down. Scroll about 70% of the way down the page, and then you'll see uh, right of center what that looks like in cross-section. And what that's not showing is that at the head and lock, you're doing that same configuration at the header. Okay. So the installer's job is actually easier because they don't have to mortise anything, it sounds like. They don't have to what? Mortise anything. Don't have to do any routing. Okay. Mm -hmm. My phone is not behaving to zoom in, zoom out. Oh, are you doing this on oh. a phone? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. I am. This our works site is better on a computer. Yeah, our site is about a month away from being friendly to mobile. Okay, nice. Okay. Okay, so I guess basically what I need to do is order whatever parts I need and wait for those to get here, huh? Yeah. I mean, you you could also, 
Yeah, you could. Um, or you mm -hmm. could get some of the work done now. Um, you know, um, just depends on, you know, okay. the, what the cost would be to have two service calls rather than one or right, three right, rather right. than two. Right. Okay. 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 So do you have any more questions or is that helpful? Like, uh, Yeah, it helps a lot. Yeah, I have, I have an idea. Are you still concerned but, about getting it to match up perfectly? Um, no, I think I can find out. The thing is just the bottom. I don't know how, how to deal with the bottom. That's the only thing. How do you deal with the bottom and not setting the door down? And I, and I don't know. If, the door if has if to come down. Okay. Yeah, but if there's no to... no way to do it otherwise. It must come. The door must come down on saw horses. The old one right. pulled off. The new one put on. And it's super okay. crucial that once you get the hook strip nailed to the bottom of the door, that you never let that make contact with the ground. Otherwise, you'll crush it. Right. It's a yep. two-person job. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. And so that J piece goes against. The the what do we call it, the threshold thing, right? Yeah. So, so the, the mouth of the J hook is going to mate with the lip, or the lip is going to enter that bird. It's not a bird's mouth, but it's kind of like a bird's mouth, right? And that's where it interlocks. Yep. That's why I didn't replace this because it actually goes with the whole system. Okay. No, the bottom is not okay. Okay, cool. Well, um, I guess let's see. So in this slot, in the in a door on the hinge side, um, it looks like the hinges come out just a skosh into that spot. That's that's going to have to be changed, huh? Notch okay. back a little okay. bit, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can, uh, okay, he's got that. Okay. Well, I haven't heard the word okay. skosh in a long time. It's like the word snazzy. You don't hear it often. <laughs> snazzy. I get accused of using some weird words that are old sometimes. I don't know why or where they come from. I was. Yeah. I like. I, I like. I, I you know. Um, I like tossing pedantic out there. Uh, indolent. Ooh. You know, odd words. Ooh. You know, uh, uh, sagacious. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, magnanimous. I like like tossing those yep, words in there. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I've that's looked up the word magnanimous the so many times that I have the dictionary memorized. The, the definition: mm -hmm. keen mental discernment. You know, uh, mm -hmm. sagacious, and then you know. Anyway. How about dichotomy? Yeah. So you know, I kind of lay <laughs> off that because then I start to people start to think I'm being condescending. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh. All righty. Well, cool. Um, thank you so much. I remember you being very helpful when I called that original time. And again, you are. Um, thank you. So, um, oh, and okay. So we got to order these parts. When okay. So, I'll, yeah, I'll send you back over to Corey. He's got the order number. Just tell him what you want. You either order one more 80 inch piece or you order an 80 inch and a 36 inch if you don't want to try to reuse a good piece of that original stuff. So, yeah, stand by one moment. I'll send you to him. Okay, thank you. Yeah, stand by. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, let's just go in a little deeper on the conversation that you just listened to in terms of what exactly would need to happen. Um, referring to the cross-section that I referred the client to at the end, I want to touch on that a little bit more, make it a little bit more obvious. Let's switch to the screen view and do that now. So let's look at the 16AZ that the client ordered. And here's the image that the client ended up looking at. So this is if you were looking from the top of the door down into the center like i had said it doesn't show the header so let's let's hop over here okay here's the door 
This is a cross section. If you see it on a typical drawing, A, A, B, B. So the A section Yeah, let's go over here. The A section That's your door. It's going to have another frame over here, obviously. And this would be AA. So that piece of weather stripping is going to be nailed to the jam. So what you've got to do is if you're doing this installation brand new, you've got to make that slot. And you're basically going to use, you know, um, I mean, I would personally end up attempting to use a router with a very customized um, fence or guide on the router base so that I could achieve the mortise width that they that are that is needed here and they're not giving us this dimension how large that is um, and the short answer is we know that the 16 AZ is 0.108 material thickness so 108 times 2 is 32nd of an inch and there's got to be probably a 16th in there so I'm thinking we're gonna need to be about 3 16 wide but don't quote me you have to measure that and then you're going to leave a margin. So I'm going to guess about 3 16 Now over here, you can see what's happening is they're actually showing this with this running underneath the door. I've never seen it curved like this. I would just see a large mortise done. So if it's 3 8 and I'm imagining it's 3 8 in this dimension as well, what you're going to end up needing to do, and this is a bit easier because uh, you're just going to use a... Um, well, you'd use a two flute carbide bit and you're going to set up the same sort of cut well you'd set up a straight edge on your door and then you would just mortise that so what would end up happening is in your in your BB you've got to create this mortise here is what it is so that you can get your your piece attached like that and I think what you're going to end up seeing yeah you're going to then end up seeing and that you nail here this you nail here this has got that slot in it okay and you nail that here now what they're not showing you is that if we were looking at the door from the right side view you know and we drew ourselves a A CC section it's going to be the same scenario here so what you do here you're going to do up at the header this is the height of the door this is the door looking at it from the right side so this is going to be 80 inch or whatever your height is okay and you're going to need to mortise that as well um, depending on what tool you have you know you just have to decide what tool you own and can you get the professional result with what you already own obviously a router is going to going to be what you need um, and it just depends on you know what you're going to use I mean if I were to search curfing power tool Festool has a tool that you'd be able to use let's take a look Yeah, so this, yeah, you could also use something really, really expensive. I mean, that, that wouldn't work for the edge of the door, um, but it's the concept that you're going to create a slot. The tool I was thinking of... this joiner you would be able to create a, a curf down the edge of the door by turning the, the tool upside down you should be able to create that 
you know, some, well, this, well, this, this may not work actually because this is a biscuit cutter. Yeah, that's not what we want. Uh, actually, now that I think of it, what you could use would be in a router. Uh, would be something like the cutter as seen here. Ah, sorry. We'll get there. Right on. So here you go. So this kind of tool would be really ideal. And what you'd end up doing is... Yeah, this circular saw sort of cutter, uh, this cutter here, and what I would end up doing would be looking at a tool like that that I would I would lay the door down. Sorry, I've got to get rid of some of this. I would lay the door down on saw horses. Okay. And I'm going to want to put a curve right down here. So I would end up getting my router. And my tool would come down here. My shaft, you know, is going to be up here, right? And then that cutter is going to be screwed to this. And my door, the depth of my cutter is going to be exactly positioned this is the side of my door and I would run that down the edge of the door and I would have a straight edge here clamped on both sides and through the thickness of the width of the door so that the straight edge didn't get pushed in I didn't want I wouldn't want that unnecessarily deeper than it needs to be I would make sure that it was a very solid piece of aluminum that's there. And actually, that Festool circular saw gives a great example of the idea. Meaning, if you were to have a piece of flat aluminum, this isn't Festool, but something like this that is so rigid, as you're moving the router down the edge of the, the, edge of the guide, you don't want to bow in the guide because it's not rigid enough a real big piece of aluminum like this would be plenty rigid enough so that's what you want to try to accomplish as you're doing that so this sort of concept would work out really great and then you would do the same logic except you're going to change the cutter to just a two flute carbide bit and your door is going to look like this right in the edge you get the concept so really easy. One router, one straight edge, two different cutting bits, and you're home free. So I'm not a carpenter, and I don't make a living installing weather stripping, but I've sure spent a lot of time in a wood shop, and it would just be a matter of what tools do I have, and what what do I need to get the professional result? This this would absolutely work in a small shop setting, and in the field. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So I hope that video is of some value. At some point in the future, I'll make a video of me actually doing it. Um, and we'll just uh, revisit this at that time. If you have any questions on interlocking, weather stripping, whether it be zinc or bronze base, not a lot of people make this anymore. We've got, uh, there, there are manufacturers who used to make the material. Uh, and now there's really only one or two that I know of. Um, and people still need this interlocking weather stripping because they've got doors that are several decades old um, or 
you're doing a project that is under the requirements of being historically compliant. We did a job for a very large university uh, in, in the South, um, a, a dominating school when it comes to high school uh, college football. And they were building a new dorm building. And that dorm building needed to match what they used when the other buildings were built in the late 19th century. So we sent them a mess of metal weather stripping. Metal weather stripping is not great when it comes to our value because you've got metal touching metal. But when it comes to an environment like the American Southwest, where you have sand that blows and you have scorpions that try to get in, or if it's driving rain or snow like you'd have in Chicago, maybe not great R value, but the metal touching the metal is going to absolutely um, restrict anything but the ta the smallest of particulate from getting in. So very effective. Now what I didn't show you online was the 32Z, and that's just shaped like this, and the threshold's going to have a lip so that when the door closes, it interconnects like this. That's really easy, and I've got lots of videos on interlocking thresholds and you can view that there. Any questions on this stuff, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Again, thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.